Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to have a look about some apps which you need to have on your Mac OS. And these apps are not divided into any categories as such. I think for using and getting started for any of the Mac, these are some of the basic softwares which you will need in order to get started along with your Mac as well. In other words, these apps will make your daily life while using a Mac uh, simpler and more convenient as well. And also, because of some reasons, I won't be able to record face videos for this video. So let us get started and look into the guide on which apps should you essentially have on your Mac. So the first app right now is the Carabiner Event Viewer and the Elements app. So this is nothing but a keyboard app which allows us to customize all the apps. For example, if you have directly connected a keyboard and anything like that, you can directly convert uh, and remap all the keys into a particular function. Well, this is directly supported into the Apple keyboard settings as well. But using this app allows you to control granular settings as well and this app is free as well so for example as you can see for f1 to f12 you can directly choose from all these keys and see which key you want to assign it to a particular thing this is most useful if you have a keyboard which is not directly supported by a mac and you have some extra buttons that you want to map as well similarly you can also uh, use it for uh, navigating it along with other as well you can also create various profiles as well so using the profile feature you can just switch the profile depending upon the type of work that you are doing as well the app is feature loaded as well and you can do a lot of things and for example if you don't know what a particular thing is doing so you can directly use this in order to uh, key log your entries and check if a particular key is there then it has been assigned by using what name for example i'm pressing the delete button so now it will be showing the key code as delete forward up arrow down arrow so on and so forth so this is how uh, the app allows you to map the keys and make your life easier as well if you are someone who likes to use keyboard shortcuts a lot so moving further, uh, the next app on the list is Near Drop. I've already made a reel about this app on my Instagram page as well. Using this app, it allows you to directly send files using your Apple devices. Directly you can send it to your Android devices. So for sending it cross functionality, it directly allows you to do so. But the only thing is that by using Near Drop, you can only send the videos or files or anything which you have only to this macbook so you won't be able to send it to an android device using that and for that we have a different app which is called as the local send this local send is an open source app which allows you to send and receive files be it from apple windows android linux so on and so forth it is a completely open source app which allows you to send the files and documents from cross functionality devices so this is one of the must have apps in order to transfer files on the go wherever you want and if you are really looking to transfer your files only from your android device to your mac then near drop is a better option and do note that both of his apps require you to have connected to the same wi-fi network and i think that is a good deal for the amount of features you will be able to use to send the files as well going further there are some basic apps which i think are open source and you should have it on your device as well First and foremost is I Love PDF. So this allows you to use the same functionality that was present in the I Love PDF website, but this is there in the form of an app. So that is a very good thing that you can do all the things that you want directly over using this app. Pretty straightforward and convenient as well. Now moving further, this is the open source PDF software tool which you can use to view your PDFs. It does not have any ads as well and it allows you to convert all the PDF files and convert and even edit a particular PDF file which is there without any problem. So this is a very good thing. On the other hand, if you are going to use Adobe Acrobat Reader, then if you want to edit the PDF, that is simply not possible. Then you have to rely on other tools. So 
This PDF Gear app is a single app on Mac which allows you to edit all the files on the PDF as well as view all the files all in a single app without needing any subscription as well. The other apps are just simple such as VLC Player and Audacity. VLC Player is the best and the Audacity app is for editing your audio as well. Now moving next into the list, this is a most important document which you need to have especially if you are using a Mac and if you are someone who don't want to pay for subscription of your Microsoft Office then this LibreOffice is exactly the software which you should install. With this you directly are will be able to use Excel, PowerPoint, Word so on and so forth. So you don't need to get any subscriptions and existing file formats such as doc, doc, docx all are supported inside this app and every time you are saving it it allows you to so definitely this is a good option if you want to do some basic editing well if you're someone who relies heavily on microsoft office and excel and all those stuffs then i think it will be worth if you pay and get the subscription but for someone who just uses it uh, occasionally or need it just for writing text and basic features of the microsoft office and not really going to use macros or excel formulas or something very specific which is uh, related to the uh, niche you are work going to work in i think this libre office works pretty great as well it is very lightweight as well then other apps which i think are the an uh, archiver which is allows you to just uh, unzip the files and so on apple also has a built-in one or you can just get this then if you have a custom displays which are connected then better display is a good application that you need to have uh, this app is uh, recommended to have especially if you have some scaling issues on your device this is mostly useful when you have connected it to an external display or are using a monitor just like i'm using for my mac mini m4 setup so over here you can just directly switch the resolution or just change the display resolution as such uh, and also directly combine the hardware level brightness it also enables the high dpi resolution mode for some of the devices such as when you are using a 24 inch monitor or a 28 inch monitor this allows you to micro control all the things and color profile and all other things you can directly make a separate video on this entire app because the it is really feature loaded as well and it is free as well i mean it is a uh, freemium version so you can pay and get all the features but with the basic feature you can do a lot of things as well because especially the resolution and the display mode and the brightness control and volume control those are the main things which you will require especially when you are starting with the display so moving ahead inkscape and gimp is nothing but some open source tools which you need to use in order to get started with your editing for photos and so on and so forth or if you want you can just uh, get photoshop or use canva for your basic tasks Caliber was already covered in the previous video where I talk about how you can use it to con, uh, send files to a Kindle as well. Another app on the list is Stats. Well, basically this app allows you to see how everything is going on on your Mac and in a detailed way. Think of it is like a detailed task manager which allows you to see everything on the app as well. For example, this is the RAM part where it shows that 53% uh, of RAM is used, who is using how much and so for the CPU part this is how it shows that how user history is there for all the parts and who is using how much CPU. So for the disk part it shows uh, how much is the disk usage and which app is exactly using it. Other than that there is also a network tab which shows how was the connectivity if there were any drops and what is the download speed and so on and so forth. So this app is worth for uh, having a keep on the stats and controls on the go if you want to check anything and it is free of cost as well and it is updated pretty nicely and you can also set up it to give the update interval and minor settings and even notifications that if you want to uh, if the gpu is using more than 75 percent then you can just toggle it and it will tell you that the usage has been on the higher side so if something unnecessary is running on the background you can just quit it so now the last so now the last step on the list is cloudflare warp so this is basically a vpn app it does not have a lot of features but the only thing about this vpn is you it is very simple to use you just need to connect it like this and it's connected to a, uh, to the vpn you can't select any location or anything as such but the main advantage is that if some sites are blocked because of your location then you can just turn it on and you will be able to use that site so i mostly use it for this purpose only because sometimes there are some international sites which don't work at your location and just by 
uh, toggling this switch you can directly access the site well uh, if you are looking for a vpn which uh, uh, gives you access to choosing the location as well then this is not the app but this is very simple to use and has no subscription or anything whatsoever you can directly choose 1.1.1.1 or with warp warp is slightly faster but the difference is not very noticeable so this was the apps which i think you must have in your mac os when you are especially starting out because all of these apps will be needed in a day to day life in order to do simple tasks such as sending files receiving files editing a document or editing images or having basic task manager functionality some of the features are found in the mac os settings as well but i think these apps provide a more granular control over all the settings which are required to use on a day to day basis well do you have any other app which you use on a daily basis and it is essential on your mac well let me know in the comments below and i will be happy to hear about them as well and also i will make sure to try them out as well well from all of the apps which are suggested in this video let me know in the comments below if there you like any of the app which was there and it was super useful for you also sorry to record this video without revealing any face uh, because of some medical reasons i was not able to record myself properly let me know if you have any doubts as well and i will be happy to help as well well thanks for watching See you in the next video.